Hey, sugar. I feel like there are so many different things that I need to learn as an adult. I'm this nasty on a regular day, like on a Tuesday. I am your host, Samaya Burton. And don't worry, it's not just another sex podcast. Clickety-clack, a bad bitch is back. Y'all, life comes at you full freaking circle. (laughs) Welcome to the Not Just Another Sex podcast. My name is Samaya Burton, and it's been a long time coming, but I am your host. And I'm super freaking excited. Whew! Okay, I'm going to breathe now. You guys, so much has happened, and I have so much to tell you. If you are just finding me for the first time, I am Samaya, and I am a hands-on sexual educator, and I am the owner of Sexual Essentials, and we have been going for almost six years now. And it was time for me to start a podcast. So this first episode is going to fill you in. We're going to catch up. I'm going to introduce the show to you. And we're going to have a great ass time because, I mean, that's what we've been doing. You know, I am in this fly ass pink church pseudo. So we're just going to do it a little snazzier than usual. I felt like I had to bring out my Sunday's best because it's been a long time coming. But um, I am not alone today. I have a friend here and she's going to help me introduce the show to you guys. This is my girl, Dara. Say hey to the folks there. Hey, girl, hey. (laughs) (laughs) And she is here with me today, and I want to make sure that I introduce her. Um, When I say life is a full circle moment, this is my girl who is helping me carry with dildos up the subway in Brooklyn. Up and down the subway. Okay, up and down. In the cold. Uh, When I. (laughs) Dragging dicks through the airport. (laughs) <laughs> we didn't drag so many dicks through the airport and um so I just felt like um having some assistance to tell my story today was important to me and I felt like there was really no one better because she'd been holding dicks for the years she'd been holding me down 10 dicks down okay so thank you Dara I appreciate you friend and let me welcome you guys to the show so I decided to create not just another sex podcast for multiple reasons. Outside of it being time, it was definitely a battle of that thought that, okay, everybody has a podcast, blah, 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 blah. But y'all know that I had to figure out, just like most of us do, that, you know, God makes space. God makes space for you no matter how many people are doing the things that you think are done out there. Nobody is doing it like you. And for me, this was this was honestly just divine timing. Um, And I think that that was a process in itself. So for a few months, you guys really haven't heard too much from me um, because my Instagram page of almost 300,000 followers was deleted, you know. Um, And so I get a lot of DMs. First of all, shout out to y'all checking on me and saying, you know, oh, what are you going to do next? Are you going to come back? Are you going to build this stuff back up? And I honestly had to take some space, um, take space to to grieve, you know. Um, I think that we say that, you know, it's just social media and things like that, but it's really not. If you're a small business and you happen to take off organically, sometimes it becomes the way that your business, you know, runs. It's its own marketing system and things like that. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, I mean, I have a child. <laughs> like, he got to eat. Um, so, you know, that was an adjustment. But more than that, I think that this podcast showed up while I'm a different version of Samaya. So if you've been here from the beginning, first of all, I hope that you're excited um, because this one is definitely for you guys. I think that I've been giving parts of myself um, to you all, but never really the full story and not really being confident enough to stand in my truth. And so much has changed because now I kind of feel like, um, well, not even kind of, I feel like I have a duty and a responsibility to tell others how I got to this point, what has happened, Um, So you can feel encouraged, too. So this entire podcast is, of course, coming from my point of view. But we are really going to break down a lot of the the route that I took to become this way and to really grow up and almost repair myself and find a way to um, get comfortable in my own adulthood. Um, So we're going to talk about so many things, not just sex. I mean, it's she going to get nasty because, I mean, it's me, but it's not just another sex podcast. I see it. Y'all see it. We see what you, you did. You see there. what I did. We see what you did. There. <laughs> you see what happened was full circle. 
Full circle. Y'all can't tell me I ain't a witty bitch, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just super excited. So, you know, there's going to be, you know, some emotional moments, some real ass moments, some learning moments, um, accountability moments, and not just from a woman's perspective, from men as well. So um, I'm super excited. Welcome to episode one. And we about to get this bitch started. Um, my mouth has not changed, y'all. It's absolutely inappropriate and here to make you feel uncomfortable. Yay. Don't worry. Not too much has changed. So, every show will start off with the adult tip of the day. The adult tip of the day is going to be like either a, you know, a life hack that you need to know at this age that may be found out late, maybe a tip from your therapist, like my therapist says, or, you know, some type of something that's supposed to help in adult life, something that, uh, a little tidbit that you can take with you. And so, today's adult tip of the day is a quote. <clears throat> yeah. The quote is, it's a beautiful thing to be understood, but it's a power, it's powerful to understand yourself. And I felt like this was pretty much a great one to start off the podcast because I felt like it was, it was, that was me. Um, it was really great to have a space on other people's platforms and to speak out on their podcasts and um, constantly be asked to be a guest. And I got addicted to that feeling. Um, it felt so good to be understood by other people and for them to accept my gift that I put off my own purpose and I got comfortable. And so after I really took, um, you know, a long look in the mirror, a couple of uh, weed gummies and some trips to the therapist, I have arrived and accepted that I understand my purpose. And I knew that it was time to do something different, to give something back that was bigger and really go for all of the things I truly want which was not getting on Google and seeing viral clips of me for other people's platform, but starting to create those own things for myself. And, you know, going back to having the Instagram page deleted in grieving, you know, because we grieve things, not just people, but experiences, sometimes um, a time that has passed. Um, I had to understand that just because my Instagram was gone did not mean I was gone. All my work was out there. You type me right into Google and boom, I pop up. The only thing that actually started to hurt was that most of these weren't from my own platform. It was viral from somebody else's shit. And that's great, but, you know, you got to really start putting yourself first and say, you know, it's great what I can do for others, but make sure that I'm giving myself that same energy. Facing opportunity. Age being gone. Man. Just that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's. I've always said, like, I, I can't let this one go. I could not let sexual essentials go. It was just one of those things that it was like, I have to find another way. But it was your baby. It, it was, made sense. Oh, it was definitely man, your baby. It, You've been watching that thing grow from nothing. Whew, it was. But space and opportunity is real. And yeah. Sometimes you got to remove a distraction so that you have the room to be focused. See, grown up shit. <laughs> These are the kind of things is why she's been here with me <laughs> all this time. <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, the new baby is not just another sex podcast. For the first time, I'm coming to the world as Samaya Burton, you mm -hmm. know, as the owner of Sexual Essentials, the owner of SE Media Group, and all these other things. So, okay, I'm talk your shit then. Okay, I'm a Papa hey, Church oh, collar. We, we hear you. There you go. <laughs> Papa Church collar. What's First up? mother, go ahead, be in the front seat. <laughs> Y'all need peppermint? You need peppermint? <laughs> <laughs> a little caramel? I don't know about y'all, but I am definitely at a point where staying home is one of my favorite places to be. It's where I'm the most comfortable, but also at this age, it's where I want to feel the most sensual. So how do I get both? Sexual Essentials thigh-high socks have been amazing. First of all, they actually are made for thick thighs as well. So they go all the way up to my lady parts. So I put them on with a pair of boy shorts or cute undies, crop top or a large t-shirt, and I'm in the mirror taking selfies and I just can't get enough of it. I'm super obsessed. So they have five colors and we want you to get 15% off as our loyal listeners. So make Make sure that you use code NJASP, you know, the initials of the podcast, and you're going to get 15% off your entire order. The link can be found below, or you can check the link in our bio on any of our social medias so that you can get your pair of socks before your color sells out today. All right, now back to the show. Look here. So we're going to move it on over to our second segment of the show, which is Twitter talk. I know y'all probably like, wait, but Twitter got some, look here. I felt like with all the controversy that has went on with Twitter, I felt like it was almost time to like pay homage. Is that how you say it? Homage. 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 To like, it's one of the original platforms. Like it, it had, is. 
I mean, some of the best. If you know, porn, you know. Some of the best. The best. <laughs> the best. <laughs> that too. Black Twitter moments. Um, yeah. Titty Tuesday. All like, no matter what app. Um, you went on that was going crazy, like TikTok or whatever. The conversation most likely yeah. started from Twitter. But there's always somebody reposting a tweet. Absolutely. Um, and, tw- you know, tweets cross over to all platforms and still mm-hmm. go viral. So, you know, it was the original was amazing. So um, this segment is for just talking about either controversial things or viral things or things that come up that people have been talking about, um, you know, shit like that. So today's Twitter talk is how you separate the art from the artist. And <laughs> mm. this came up because I I really battled personally with Kodak Black making some of the best songs ever. Like, for real, for real. Like, the shit be slapping. I don't know. The beats, the... But I think he is a terrible person. And, like, in traffic, I turn it down. I don't want people to, like, no. I don't want, you don't want to be associated. I don't. I feel like... I can't say that he's for women. It's all, you know what I'm saying? He's been in the news for so much crazy shit and violence and, ra- you know what I'm saying? Like all these things, right? Him and a ton of other artists. And that, yeah. For me, you know how emotional I am. Like mm-hmm. when I could, I usually, <laughs> I connect with things, right? And so for me, it's really hard, especially like as a woman with sexual trauma, I feel like I'm, like I'm not being right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so for me, I don't even like when people play R. Kelly around me. I like, know oh, that's a negative. You can't play it around. It's, and so my thing is, is like, damn, it's different. What's the difference? You know what I'm saying? And I, I know that, you know, his was so extensive, but there are so many other people. But then it was like, if you start looking around, you're going to find something mm-hmm. in somebody's life. And like, it gets to a point where even with, like, even back when Chris Brown couldn't do the Michael Jackson performance, we don't know if that was the controversy around MJ or if that was a, the controversy around Chris, Chris Brown. Brown. But I know I love his music and I feel like I held him accountable when all this stuff with you know, Rihanna happened and things in the past. Um, but that was so long ago, and I felt like it was acknowledged. But then, of course, he comes back in the news with things and women and yeah, things with like other that. women. Other women. So it's like, how do I... I, I can't erase every Everybody. artist. You know what I mean? And so it's like, okay, are there boundaries? Like, okay, I can listen, but I would never work with them. Or like, do... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's when discernment comes in, right? You have to decide what you're willing to put up with. And I think part of the reason why... At least I'll say for me, part of the reason why I was able to let go of the Chris Brown thing a little bit was because I felt like he tried to make an amends and Rihanna forgave him for that. Whereas R. Kelly hid that mess for years and then made no apology for it. Made no Mm. apology, never tried to rectify it with anybody, didn't acknowledge it. He going on and gaslighting everybody, trying to make it seem like we crazy and he's been doing okay the whole time. Yeah. Meanwhile, the women are like, nah, bro, you've done this, you keep doing it, and we just... At the very least, say sorry, but you don't want to acknowledge that. Chris Brown at least gave us an acknowledgement to it. Does it make it right? Does it make it okay? No. But does it allow me to find a way to be like, okay, maybe I can separate the artist from the um, art at this point in time. But there has to be some sort of amends, That's even a, a morsel of, you know, <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, you walking around like, I ain't, I ain't do nothing. See, and I think I think that that was kind of a, a topic that came up for me stepping even more into the entertainment field because it's like, okay, now you're talking about business. So even if you may not fuck with somebody on a personal level or fuck with everything they did, some of those opportunities are going to come across my path. And so mm-hmm. it's like the way that I've been able to sidestep those things because I was just a guest, you know, yeah. or in the capacity of of. Because it wasn't guess. really your space. Exactly. So that's a little different. I've been able to turn down interviews like, no, nah, I don't fuck with them people and, mm-hmm. and shit like that. But now it's like, okay, now I have to be the person that opens the floor for these conversations because I know how important it is to hear all the sides, whether I disagree or not. And so, you know, it kind of just one of those things that came up. But I mean, the beauty is just like you were able to make that decision is you also have the the capability of being like, as much as I need to have these conversations, I can't let this energy in my space. And like I said, I feel it's just discernment, right? I can't let what everybody outside is making up for me to let, make me decide what I feel about so-and-so. If you still fuck with the music, you still fuck with the music. What can I do about that? I'm not going to, as long as you're not physically, mentally, or emotionally hurting somebody, I was like, do what you do. But the moment you start crossing those boundaries to protect somebody else, that's when you got to decide what you're doing is right or wrong. I love that perspective. That's that's pretty full circle. Listening in, you know. So thank y'all. All right. So 
now we be getting into the meat and potatoes. Okay. I'm of steak the show. Of the show. You want to you want to steak? You a wanna, little steak. How yeah. you want to cook? Don't you want to judge you on this? Don't bless me. You want to judge you on the show? How you want to cook? Y'all not finna judge me. <laughs> no. She want to hide. No, me well. I don't do pink steak. Ah, I can't do it. I can't do it. Puck. I don't care. That cow need to be dead, dead. <laughs> okay, they said we got to end the show because <laughs> she eating them hockey pucks. Ooh, Ooh baby. I can't do it. Y'all be like, oh, this is how it's good. No, don't do that. Don't eat that in front of me. Uh, back in the day when I ate, ate a little steak, it was, it was medium rare for me. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> my name is Samaya, and I'm the host of Not Just Another Sex Podcast. And I might look familiar to you because I'm also the owner of Sexual Essentials. One of the main things that I was known for was teaching people how to do the skills that they need to have a great sex life. That means I teach master classes in dick riding 101, masturbation and squirting, and the infamous mouth master class. So what we're doing today for our listeners is giving you 50% off any class of your choice with the code NJASP. That's just the, you know, initials of the name of the podcast, if you can't remember. But use the link below or any of the links in our bio so you can take advantage of this offer. All right, now back to the show. All right, y'all. So um, today this conversation is pretty much going to flow through everything that's happened thus far to get me here. Um, This will, you know, some topics I'll kind of dive into. Some of them will brush past, not because we won't be addressing it all. It's just how we just getting started and we got so much to cover, you know. So all these things that you hear today um, will definitely be covering more in the show. And all of these topics have their own gust of subtopics to go Mm. underneath them you know like motherhood has a thousand times and things like that so um we can unpack all of it we are some time we are it's gonna take some time so y'all please get comfortable um and let's get into it um so i started sexual essentials in 2000 what was that 18 Mm -hmm. because i became a mother in 2017 so um at this time picture samaya Little chubby in the face, yes. So baby uh, face, yes. Uh, I was, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was definitely holding, you know, like motherhood weight, and um, definitely a fresh mom. Um, still breastfeeding at that time, and I was married at that time. Yeah, <laughs> it was a different world. It was a different world, <laughs> and um, I had a, I had a moment, and I was like, damn, I really want to. Um, well, actually, I was in this mom group. Let's talk about how important it was for me to um, submerge myself into something because, like, now I was a different, kind of like a different person. Not yeah. totally different, but definitely a different part of me. And so I needed a social life for that. You need to find community. Yes, I need to find a community. And um, shout out um, to the girls from FAMU. Um, Devin uh, started this um, podcast. I mean, started a, well, she has a podcast now, actually, a mom podcast. Um, but they started um, a group chat. And it was just all these different moms and they kind of were transitioning in and out after the kid got to a certain age. And, you know, um, so my homegirl um, added me to the group. And one day we were talking and we were talking about orgasms and stuff like that. And one of the girls, like a lot of the girls are like, oh, I've never had an orgasm. And I was like, bitch, but you got a kid. <laughs> what are you talking about? And so like so many of the women were like, yeah, I'm, I've never either. Or, oh, it's not consistent for me or, you know, and it was it was such an amazing conversation. And so I made just like a little separate group and I was like, you know, I'll help you guys like with this stuff yeah. or whatever. And then, um, you know, honestly, it was a really good time because it gave me an outlet. Right. And so I was like, so I sat down and I was like, okay, I could start a blog. And then I was like, no, I'm, I'm a very thorough person. Right. Indeed. I'm a very thorough, Indeed. greedy person. If I want, I want all of it. And so I was like, well, no, I got to have toys because I need to tell people how to buy the right toys because some of the toys they buy bullshit so I'm at a, at a store I said but oh I should get accounts from personal people and shit and what they say so I was like oh I'm gonna just write I'm gonna interview people too though mm-hmm. on this blog right so at this point it's like bitch it's barely a blog anymore it, it was a podcast <laughs> it was a, it was a podcast. podcast it was a uh, mini podcast <laughs> before podcasting really was blow up shooting back then it did and so um I started that and so um you know I I um I stayed up for I, I pretty much stayed up every night after I was done with the baby and like my quote unquote wifely duties made some dinner or something you know what I'm saying like after you were done with that um and I would stay up and uh, write for the and I started getting a whole bunch of content together because I knew that once you know he started getting bigger once I got back to work um let I was gonna have less time 
And so I was just pumping out a lot of content so that way I could, um, you know, have this library of stuff to put out. Um, and I did this little photo shoot and, oh my gosh. <laughs> I got to bring those bitches back up. Was that the first one with Giles? The, no, no, no. This one was one. I had like an intern, like somebody from school, Ooh. an intern come and take my pictures in my I love room. using y'all resources. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Rattler's going to find uh, them somebody. Who look here. Rattler's going to find somebody. She was like an intern or a student or something. She came and took my pictures. Listen, you, you did what you needed. To I did done. what I needed to do. So I was broke. So I started the. I started it on a credit card. And so I just bought, Um, I did all the business stuff. Like I set up the LLC and all that stuff. Um, got my EIN number and I did wholesale and I bought like some toys. They were terrible for starter toys. I think one of those, a couple of the toys were like not terrible, but it's like, I, I was really just trying to get something to create. And you made it work. Yes. I was trying to create, um, trying to, trying to create yeah. some income so I can do something different. And the toys weren't terrible, but of course I hadn't started testing all these toys yet. So, you know, I put those out there and then, um, then, uh, I mean, it came to manifesting. So this is a huge part, and this is a class that's available on my Patreon still to this day. Um, you guys can click the link below or any of the links in my bio or my website, thesexualessentials.com, to um, actually subscribe to that. But there is a masturbation and manifestation class um, that I pretty much was doing on myself, and I created the business within 28 days. So from the start of, you know what, I'm going to do this to launch, um, it was 28 days. And so I masturbated every day, and I was literally only masturbating to the the vision. Like, I, I want of this. I, yeah. yeah, like how far it could go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, I'm going to do classes because people really don't know what the fuck they're doing. But I ain't going to be like them lecturing people. I'm going to show them. And I was like, well, maybe I remember I'm the phone call when you <laughs> called me like, I'm going to start a business. I said, okay, about what? And you're like, you telling me about it? I said, okay, that sounds smart. But you know what made me click was I know women don't have orgasms. I'm very well aware. I have a degree in biology. Like it's very, it's not, it's not. <laughs> <Hella> smart. <laughs> it wasn't, smart. it wasn't something that, you know, I was like, oh, m women got to be out here getting it. Shoot. Being young myself, I was like, a lot of times I was barely getting anything. <laughs> I was just in there. I was like, well, I guess I'm just here to enjoy the ride. But when you said that you can have a baby without having an orgasm, I was like, girl, this finna be a million dollar idea. <laughs> I said, because never in my mind did it click that you could have a baby and never even mm -hmm. enjoy what's happening to your body. And then now you have a child, you have a husband or you have a baby daddy or whatever's going on in your life. And you, at the bare minimum, didn't even get Catching to none. That. And it's so crazy because, men, could you imagine like, having a child and you pre nutted like y'all stop before and she's like, Oh, I don't want to no more, but you pre nutted or something yeah. and and then you like, wait the fuck? Like it's right. one thing to Now like, both of you ain't do nothing. Ain't do nothing. And you got whole a whole life. baby. It's a whole baby. Mm -mm. Mm. See, push me down the step. Let me stop. Oh so it <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Our children uh... are precious. <laughs> 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 no, I love my baby. So, um, and honestly, I think that, um, and I think I know having having Trey. Um, God bless you. Um, <laughs> background, y'all. <laughs> Real people were creating this. <laughs> <laughs> um, having Trey definitely woke me up, and I knew that it was time to do something different. It was time to be happy. Um, and I don't know why that shit woke me up the way that it did, but having Trey was a huge trigger for me, and I didn't know. And so now I'm starting the business and, you know, things are going, right? And that's that's really great. And I'm starting to do classes now, right? So remember <laughs> remember when I was like, we're going to have a dick sucking class. I'm We're going to call it the mouth master class. I remember I sat down with my homegirl, Hannah, and I was like, we should. I said, this is what I want to do. We just need to come up with a name. And she was like, people love alliteration. They she do. was like. <laughs> They do love them a little alliteration now. She was like, mouth master class. And I said, ooh, bitch, that that's works. It. Yeah. And we've been running with it ever since. So The first um, one, I remember, Derry, if I have a class <laughs> where I teach people suck dick, you think people come? I said, hell yeah, they coming. I'm coming. Fact, I'm she coming. Was encouraging. <laughs> she was encouraging the shit out of me. Yeah. Y'all, I went to Fort Lauderdale and had his class. And I know that, you know what's crazy is that the idea already probably sounded a little crazy in itself. But then just... But women love that shit. Let's they, be honest. They, women no, they do. And you sold out very first class. My problem was, it was... <sighs> Y'all know how, like, 
something may sound crazy. So you like, I really got to pull my shit together to make mm-hmm. sure people see I'm serious. And everything went wrong in that class and we still had a fucking But blast. not a single person could tell. Not. You we couldn't tell. We no. had a ball. No. That was um, a fun class. <laughs> it, was it was a bunch of women in, well into their 40s. Yes. It and it was, was probably like two or three of us who were in our 20s, 30s. It was such a variation of women. It was so amazing. Um, shout out to Denisha. Um, she was my mentor, and she um, she told all her friends. They showed up and just different from different people, different all different places. Um, and we had an amazing time. Oh, uh, we did, and it was like, damn. Sometimes shit go wrong on the very first time, on the very first time, and we yeah. did that shit anyway. Um, and so it just it kind of kicked off from there. People was like, oh, well, when you gonna come here? And, you know, I've always wanted to travel, and mm-hmm. so back then. I just did not have a lot of disposable income. Like so many of us, it was like, I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck. It's like, I can take care of what I have to take care of. (laughs) But we find a way. And so I was like, okay, if my job can pay for me to travel, then that's a win. So I was like, okay, I'll take the classes on the road, make it big enough that it makes sense. Now, you know, at one point, it didn't make sense at all. Like, it just, it didn't. We, Nobody we, knew what they were doing. Right. We, didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, we knew we was paying for shit, and yeah. we was going. We are showing up. Showing up with dicks. dicks. Okay? So, dicks on the right. I think that our favorite place to come was definitely Brooklyn. Like, mm-hmm. we were doing classes out here, y'all. The energy was wild, though. <laughs> and they'd be like, so you doing another one tomorrow? We're like, nah. No, like, please. we gotta go home. Yes. Yeah. Our first class here... I think classes were, su- were supposed to be like 40 people back then. And yeah. we had 69 people in this room. And the whole, and it was, you know, in New York, like the spaces are so small. Yeah. So imagine being in a dance studio with 69 women and y'all trying to suck dick and ride. Because at, th- at one no point chick. I was like, yeah. you got to give them a Beyonce. We got to ride and we got to suck dick. I was trying to do it all. And these little three-hour class folks was getting lit. They was like, y'all want to go out? Ooh, them women were drunk. Drunk. Boy, look here. When I tell y'all, women be really wanting to suck some dick, okay? I pro- Like, they do. Honestly, they women like be wanting you. to let their hair down without other without having People men in the in them. the background Absolutely. judging them, other women judging them. Absolutely. And that's really what it was. It was like... People want to get slutty. Yeah. They're like, oh, we in a room full of women. We all here for the same reason. No phones allowed. We getting drunk. Ain't no phones. <laughs> Ain't nobody <laughs> taking pictures of me. Oh, I'm finna turn up. Absolutely. And that's what they did. Because a lot of times, I mean, after a while, I was like, okay, lady, please stop touching me. I don't I, know you like that. Look here, I got to go in my ch- little church pocket. <laughs> little ch- listen, oh, little and church that's why it's there for. Uh-huh. Where you'd have a little nap. A little church, not, a little church pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we met so many amazing people. Um, and we started coming back for podcasts. And that was um, really amazing. Um, y'all, y'all should have saw Dara. She, when I tell you, <laughs> these bags were so... Heavy. I mean, going through TSA and they like, no, nah, you need to take stuff out the bag. This is too big. And I'm like, can we please find another way? Please don't make me open this bag right here. And you got dildos flying out and Listen. shit. And they like, no, you really do this. They was like, can I have a car? Like, I've and that was before so the many. bags were like, we had good bags to travel oh, around yes, in. Now, we had tr- shitty ass bags. Like, y'all know how you like, damn, I, why you need to upgrade your uh, suitcase? I see why now. Mm-hmm. Like, we had terrible bags. Um, They were breaking and shit. But... They, I remember when we took the subway to, uh, all the way to Brooklyn. But we were staying in, we were staying somewhere in else. Queens. In Queens, and we had to go upstairs and downstairs. But yeah, there was a real one. Um, and so we had, you know, we had a great time. So um, then we have like personal life. So I'm getting comfortable with that, really enjoying myself. And for me, that was. I feel like that was one of the best years of my marriage. I know that sounds crazy because it wasn't a great year of marriage, but for me it was because that's when I really got a life. You know, I got a life. And so I realized um found yourself outside of being a mom and a wife. Absolutely. And really found myself. So I got married when I was twenty two. Um and I know that works out for some people and I'm definitely not knocking it if that if really what worked for you. But it was, you know, one of my not regrets, but I would say I, I realized why that happened, just not knowing myself. And I understand now that before you commit to anyone else, you have to commit to yourself first. And I hadn't done that. Um, but you were straight out of college, too. Straight out of college. Um, and definitely chasing, like, a, a security. I always wanted, like, a traditional life, like, to be a wife and things like that. But I, w- I didn't realize how fun I was, how bubbly, like, I really used to. Like, I lived in, I literally was living in Brazil for six months right before I even got into, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, into that relationship. you met him right before you left. Yes, right before I left. Um, but... I'm grateful for the journey. Sexual Essentials really started healing me along with being a mom. But, you know, the very first thing that happens before you can heal is you have to be triggered. You have to know that something is wrong. Mm-hmm. And so I had um, I had a run-in, like a really bad run-in with a, with a friend um, 
with one of my mentors that almost like broke our relationship. Um, I was having these issues in my marriage um, and I really didn't even feel adequate enough to be a mom, you know, and I just, I didn't trust anyone around my child. And so that really dug up a lot of things for me. And so I got into therapy um, at this time. So I get into therapy, I'm, I'm doing this work. Um, and, you know, I really come to terms with my own trauma. And so at this point, you know, I really confront like the situation head on. And so with my family, this is the first time that, you know, I've not first time, but the first time I've addressed to all of my family, like, you know, I'm not okay. You know, we did not handle this properly. And when I say this, you know, I've kind of spoken out on it before, but being molested, you know, by a parent and then acting like a apology is really enough. Um, I didn't realize how fucked up I was, you know? And so I know I was a huge catalyst in just not being ready for marriage because I wasn't ready to be a person. You know, I wasn't really okay with who I was. You're still um, fighting with the little kid who got hurt. Man, <laughs> that bitch hit hard. Like, Listen, um, get and, stuck in that spot. Yeah, and honestly being stuck there and not really addressing who I really was caught me caught me off guard when it was time to grow now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it was like, I know I have so much that I want to say, so much I want to do. But if I'm not being honest with myself, I can't do what's next. I can't podcast and not tell the truth. Right. You know what I mean? So I really had to come to terms. And that's been an ongoing journey. Um, so, you know, when I came out with Sexual Essentials, nobody even knew about the trauma or anything. They just knew I was starting this business. But the more I got into it, the more people wanted to know about me. So, you know, now I work through, um, you know, divorce and things like that and child getting older and we're getting called on these all these podcasts. Like people are asking questions. Yes, people are asking questions about you, how you got this way, and you know, me wanting to speak out about more things and really put my voice out there. But if I wasn't gonna be honest, there was no way for me to do that. Um, so you know, now I've went through divorce, I'm doing motherhood and and we have a great co parenting relationship. And so, you know, things have moved on. Um, but relationships still weren't necessarily getting better, you know, even though I feel like I'm healing. And then um, you know, the 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 opportunities are changing. They're growing. Like, there is my podcast friend. She'd be like, you need to be on this. I don't listen to a lot of stuff. When you make content, it's very difficult to listen to, take in yeah. as much content because of time. So it's like I'm not a huge TV person. I don't always get to catch up, you know, with everything that I want to, but I kind of like – Listen in, but Dara like, no, you got to go on this podcast, this podcast, and we knocking them off the list. Like, we've made it to Essence, you know, um, as a speaker at Essence and um, hosting panels and 85 South and, you know, Girl. interviews with Exo Nicole and, you know. Talk your shit. Look here. Let them know. You've Poor been out here. And Revolt, um, you know, Be well, Simone. And a long journey, but it's listen. been a long journey. And, um, all those things have happened and then COVID, you know, happened. Hmm. So when COVID happened, I had just, and I had been self-funded all this time. When COVID happened, I put, um, I put up all the money for the tour in advance. I was so proud of myself. I was like, everything is paid for in advance. Now everything that comes in, I just, you know, we're, Girl, I we're remember I was ready good. to go on them trips. We were so ready. I was like, yeah. Dara, you want to go on tour? Um, and you know, Dara loves to try, well, you might not know, but my girl loved to travel. So if she in it, like, so she's, you know, working, you know, to a certain extent, but we're having a good time now. Mm -hmm. So now we're staying in better places and, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't having to drag dicks yeah, around so much. Yeah, dicks everywhere and shit. So, um, we're having a great time and COVID happens. So I lose all the money of the tour. Mm. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just have to try to do it on Zoom. Bro, Dara came in town for my birthday one year and was like, bro, it's like 100 women in here online sucking dick. And they dead ass serious. I'm talking about it all was in the camera like, <laughs> can you do that again? <laughs> and so that's Had when I realized. do that thing. Look here. That's when I realized it was really time to shake things up as far as like content and that I really wanted to do something else. So I was like, okay. So I put out my classes, which are still available. All the master classes, like the Masturbation and Manifestation Masterclass, the Dick Writing 101, um, and the Mouth Masterclass. All of them are available online now. And that was the best thing I could do because it freed me up. I never wanted, you know, a job, you know? Yeah. Um, and and was, them classes were hard work. Oh my god! Those classes were hard. They work. are very hard. Like I had it a would trainer only be come forty five minutes, but we would be tired. Oh my goodness! Trainer would come. I had a trainer that came in there, and she was like, "Yo, my legs are like sore as fuck." And so it was. It was really amazing. Um, and the classes are still up. You can uh, go on my website and check those out. Support feed us. <laughs> um, 
but outside of that, it it really uh, showed me that I had way more space to cut co- mm-hmm. more ground to cover than I could just showing up in person for classes, right? Um, and at this point, my job gave me an ultimatum. So I actually was in real estate. Um, and my job was like, you know, you're not here enough. And I'm like, well, I'm doing my job. We're in COVID. I live, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I live what else here. Do you need from what me? else do you need from me? And I remember I broke down. I picked up my best friend, Stephanie, and I was like, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do. They're trying to fire me. And she was like, bitch, quit. She was like, your business is jumping. Like, yeah. at this point, I'm like, what? and I still did not see myself. You know what I'm saying? I still did not see what was supposed to, what I was really doing, I still didn't realize it. And she was like, bro, quit. Girl. And that's how I feel like all of us constantly. <laughs> but that's like not so just Maya. you. It's an everybody thing, right? You never see yourself through the lens that everybody else yes. is looking through. And but imposter syndrome. So. Imposter syndrome is real. And especially for, I feel like especially for black women, you're constantly told that you're not enough in the space that you're in. Like you said, you're at a job where... It's not like anything's going on. Everybody's stuck inside <laughs> and I'm doing my do job, but you tell me it's still not enough. And that's wild to me because I'm doing the best that I can. And you asking for more just for the sake of asking, not because something's lacking. Yes. But to that extent, I mean, when she told you to quit, I was like, girl, the business been Look booming. Here. And if people paying for the same thing they were going to pay for in person. Online. Yeah. No I was call, like, no overhead what are we worried about? Yeah. And so um, that Memorial um, weekend, I wrote up my letter. Um, I quit and I blew it up on a big ass poster board. And I was and I was like, now nah, I can't go back. And I it hangs. It Sometimes hangs you got to burn that bridge. So, you know, you can't walk yeah, back across it. Had to. And so, you know, I blew that up, put it on my wall and I haven't looked back. And in that just in that summer, I made my salary alone. And it was just like, listen, what yeah. in the fuck? Like. Right. Why Won't he do it? What happened? Won't he why? do it? Why? And so, you know, it's so funny to be back here now, right? When mm-hmm. the Instagram page got deleted. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And yes, you have your email list. And I'm so like, y'all, I'm not a silly businesswoman. Like I have like I have my email list and things like that. But when you take off somewhere, you know, and you go viral somewhere, like that really does amazing things. It can do mm-hmm. amazing things if your business is set up right. So that was a huge loss for me. Um, but um. Space and opportunity. Space and opportunity and really just following the path. And so um, last year, we've kind of, I started the art exhibit, the live sex art show. I was dreaming again. Listen. You know. An amazing, amazing event. <sighs> the live sex art show was so amazing and is so amazing. Like, so now I put on the And will continue one. to be on. It, it was definitely another, um, it was a sign that I, I really wanted more. I mm-hmm. wanted to be in the event space. I really wanted to be in entertainment. And it's just like, I think that I was not only running for myself um, and and how big it could really be, but also knowing that my boundaries were not good enough to handle being in that type of spotlight, you know? And so after I did the art exhibit, I definitely came to terms with everybody that is around me should not be here. And I cleaned house. I cleaned house. Um, and... I'm grateful for everybody that was there, but I had to realize that you have to watch where you give your energy. You have to watch who you're willing to give everything up for because they oh, may not you? value in that way. Um, and I definitely went on a journey of self-worth and really trying to figure that out, what that looked like. Um, and last year I took, you know, six, seven months off from dating altogether. And the things that I've learned have been amazing, you know, and not just about dating, but myself, really dating myself. And the more that I fell in love with myself, the more that I allowed myself to let sexual essentials grow so much that sexual essentials isn't even the main thing anymore. Now you have SE Media Group and, you know, a holdings company and these other things. Well, it's a conglomerate, yeah. friend. It's, it's, a con- it's, a, it's, a it's a business. It's a beat business. Yeah. And, you know, that's beautiful. Um, got my first opportunity to try my hand at intimacy coordination. Um, and so I was the intimacy coordinator for Kiki Palmer and Key TV Network for their first show, Ho and Tell. Girl, and... go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and that was amazing. Tell um, them how the sacrifices look built here. you up for better. I had to, there were a couple moments in the in the last few months where I really had to make it work. Um, my child turning five, B. Simone called and was like, hey, we went viral because mm-hmm. <laughs> we went viral because B was like, I ain't never had an orgasm. And, and shout out to the fans and the folks that support. We're like, you need to go to this girl. Mm-hmm. And they sent him. To, they sent her to me, um, and we did an episode on it. And I, I taught her how to orgasm um, from the master masturbation um, masturbation and squirting one on one class. 
And she was like, can you get down here? It was Trey's birthday. You know, you know damn yeah. well I was not missing that. Um, and so Trey went to work with me. We flew in that day. We recorded that day. You, t- you took us. Yeah. Uh, that big old dog almost got my baby. Oh, that poor baby. <laughs> It um, was a day though, but I feel like first of all he's not gonna remember. But if he did, he'd be like, "My mommy took me out and she took me to Atlanta." Here he he flew um because it was his birthday. I was like, "Okay, we'll find first class for everything." Damn, you um, already a bougie baby. Look here, next time we got on them flights, I was so embarrassed because he tried to sit in the first row. He seat. said, "My mommy and he me said- sit in the front." <laughs> And folks was like, mm, he's been here before. Yeah. And I, any t- so whenever I fly with him now, like, what I'll, is this walking to the, the middle back. of the <laughs> back of the plane? <laughs> Look here, you ain't yeah. never had a child call you broke because I was <laughs> like, oh my goodness, mommy, the um, the front, correct? No, it was, it was, it was a time like. And it just it just happened that way that we were able to grab a ticket, but we flew in that day. We flew out. We missed our flight. Um, he saw what that was like, and he's like, "It's okay, mommy. We go get something to eat, you know." And and, and a he baby was, after my own heart. And and he was right. Yeah, he went, got it was to okay, eat. and we all gonna get something to eat. We flew. We still <laughs> flew in, and we went to the beach. That's what he said he wanted to do. And so it was really amazing to show myself that I can do both. You know, mm-hmm. even with the um, even with the Kiki Palmer situation, like that was a hey, can you be here tomorrow? Yeah, and I had to miss um one of my my best girls thirtieth birthday. Um, so I know we have to take our trip fee. I know you're hearing this. Um, my love, but yes, it, <laughs> that was really hard. Like I was like, all of us turned 30, everybody has shown up, yeah. you know, like we can't miss these things, but she was like, this is worth missing it. So showing myself that I could do both was really amazing for me. And so, you know, I'm in this moment where I'm like living out my motherfucking dreams and shit, you know, girl. and I love around. watching it. I love that for you. <laughs> Roll around in that. the van. I, y'all gotta, um, if y'all have not checked out Charlie the van. Yeah, I got to look at her. Um, it's my love child. I converted one of those camper vans, the little um, transit vans. That's the dream for real. Yes. And so I've been traveling around and working in that and stuff like that. So I'm really excited. And now we fucking here, you know. And now I still feel like we barely, like, we ever even <laughs> ha- like hit the precipice I'll, of where I, I know you finna be. We haven't even scratched the Because now I'm like, I'm allowed. I've given myself permission to be amazing. I've given myself permission to fail. I've given myself permission to see what the fuck happened. Like, just enjoying the journey. Look here, I really, I don't want to fuck up my kid, you know? And I feel like the best thing that I can give him is being present, but also being happy. Um, I don't want to live my life through him. And I want to show him, like, hey, shit ain't all, like, perfect. Um, But just show you, this is my truth, you know? Like, there are times when I wish I was more like a regular motherly mother, but that's hard too. Like I was gonna say, all but of why? it. Because all of it, all of it is hard. And all so, of it's hard, and the journey is the is the reason why you're here. But furthermore, as far as him, the imagine the memories. Like we think we seen <laughs> all the things that like he could could envelop, or he could be like, dang, we didn't do X Y Z. But if I was a kid, I'd be like, damn, my mama took me here and she took me I there. Doing some and because I remember a kid, I don't remember going nowhere <laughs> past the, the, the backyard. So for my for me my parents to be able to take me around the country first class, man, maybe I didn't see a plane until I was in my twenties. <laughs> it was it was so crazy because I even had to allow myself to pick a seat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you always sometimes I used to talk myself out of you ain't got to sit there. You don't need the, you don't why why if somebody gave you a grant and they was like hey I'm gonna give you a grant for this much it's ten thousand dollars you gonna take. For a hundred, because you don't want to take all. Yeah, of it. no, I want to be greedy. Yeah, I, I want to. What? This is what's being offered to yeah. you, and I feel like this is my life. This is what's being offered to me, and I, I'm a little bougie. I, and that's I next with it. Like I really like comfort. I like and not going past my means. But if I have something available, I want to use all that shit. No, but we you know all bougie saying? in what we like, and there is no reason to deny yourself because you feel like. Well, is this? Am I being greedy? Are you being greedy, or did you work hard? It's absolutely. I feel like this is my time of really seeing myself, you know, and um, I'm so grateful for just getting to this point. So, well, friend, we've been seeing you. <laughs> we've been seeing you. And we I, seen I it. appreciate you. Um, since jump, we have definitely. Um, I don't know. It's it's well, we start out working out. First of all, y'all get you a fat friend, okay? <laughs> Work out with somebody because Fun. them friendships. Yeah. Look here, you know how many friends I made from when we was uh when we exactly. Was All my best friends are people who used to right. look crazy, and then we started working out together. <laughs> Absolutely, like create some friendships. Um, yeah. I'm so grateful to my circle, my friends, Rich Bitch Bible Study, Dara, Steph, everybody. Um, that has really 
you know, really helped um, help me in this like reparenting journey of myself. So listen, it takes a village, and that's not just for children. Look here, because baby, it's a kid <laughs> at heart over here. Yeah, it's not um, just for children. It takes a village to raise an adult. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a really a village to make sure your business gets off the ground. Like that. having that community, that support is so important. And asking sometimes, for help listen, is so important. Being able to just look at somebody and be like, I need, need you. you. <laughs> I beg of you. Please, please help me. Please help me. Help me now. Yes. So um, thank you. And I'm, it's, it's, this is such a full circle moment to have you here. It and is. be able to thank you in person and just say thank you for supporting me and always being there. Because Pleasure it's just, um, oof, we've been packing Yoni oil orders and for so. Sick- we used it to, makes my heart happy. We used to sell out in like a day, and Daryl would fly up to help me roll a whole bunch of coochie soap. I wish oil. I was flying. I was but, driving. Oh, you I driving. was driving my little broke ass up. <laughs> <laughs> I, was dri- y'all. I was driving my little broke ass up to Tallahassee yes. or down to Tallahassee when I was in Atlanta still. And I, I was could like, not afford Daryl. Daryl was a very expensive woman. She was like, "Honey, I'm not taking anything lower than what I what I uh, yeah, what I deserve, but, but I, I will, will help you. Yes, I will and, help and for free." And she was like, I will help for free. And I learned that from her. And so um, I, anytime I was not able to take what somebody offered and I wanted to do it anyway, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it for free. Um, so that is the end of the meat and hockey puck. Because um, that's what yeah, hockey, Don't. The hockey puck steak. Listen, uh, the meat just and because the, the little plants are behind you is no need for the shade. <laughs> the, the food still be good. Hey, you guys. It's your host, Samaya. I hope that you guys are loving the show. Let's think about this name here. Not just another sex podcast means that some of it is absolutely sex. So if you're loving the content and you want to talk about this more, you need to join our Patreon community. There we have almost 300 hands-on classes, workshops, interviews, behind the scenes, and so much more. We even meet up once a week on Zoom to discuss the episodes. Did you relate to something? Did you have something to say? Or did you just need to talk about it a little more and meet other like-minded people? Patreon is definitely where you need to be. So don't hesitate. Look below, click the link, sign up, and I will see you at our weekly Zoom. All right, now back to the show. Y'all, yeah, so find much, right person to cook it. So much good stuff is coming, and I um I can't wait to tell you more. All right, so hey, you guys, the next segment is advice. Um, if you would like to send us some advice and you want us to tell you more or you know help or some shit, send us an email at not just another sex pod at gmail dot com, and we will read them on here. And we hope that you do that. We really do want to help. Um, make sure you add some details. We will always keep you anonymous. Um, but just give us a little feedback. Not a 10-page letter, but, you know, not like a little DM text um, so we know what's going on. So we will start that next episode. And we're going to leave you with a spiritual tip of the day. Um, this is something that I wanted to add in there because I feel like we always talking about, like, higher self and energy and higher power. And, and evolving. Evolving universe and all yeah. this crazy shit. And people don't really know what the fuck we talking about. Like, dating yourself and tarot cards, astrology. And um, so this is where we'll give one tip that's something that's kind of spiritual because everyone does have a spiritual journey. Um, and if you don't have one, I do believe that you should create one. Um, so we'll give you a tidbit at this part every single time and introduce new concepts. Um, They may be for you, they may not, but um, today is going to be about clear quartz. Clear quartz is a crystal and it can be used to magnify things. And so crystals um, definitely hold an energy to them and clear quartz is one for helping you with clarity. And it's also the crystal that I use for those 28 days when I started this business. Um, 28 days and that plan that 28-day plan lasted me five years before I had to go back to the drawing board and the business really transitioned into something that I did not think of then. Um, and even then I started tried to start a podcast before. So even this yeah. is something that has come back, you know? Okay, gems. Um, it was a playbook <laughs> then. Full, full circle. Um, and I used to masturbate and manifest with this crystal yoni egg in my coochie. And it was great. It was great. I got some orgasms and I got insight and I literally would take my goals and I would masturbate to them. Um, And so my spiritual tip of the day is to get you some clear quartz because whatever you're feeling, it will provide you clarity and magnify. So um, I always start with things from a budget friendly perspective. So if you're getting into crystals, you will find out that it is a 
slow addiction that kind of starts. <laughs> um, but I always start off with the essentials first. And Clear Quartz is one of those because even if you don't have a lot of disposable income or not sure if you really want to invest too much, um, whatever you're thinking about, Clear Quartz can magnify that. So it can really be used for anything, whatever you're focused it's a beginner on. beginner crystal. It's a great beginner crystal. Yes. Yeah, so um, please make sure that you check out more about uh, masturbating and manifesting as well as yoni eggs and how to use them along with almost 300 other courses on our Sexual Essentials Patreon. Um, there are almost 300 classes on there. You can click below to add yourself or go to the sexualessentials.com and click the classes tab to join us or any of the links in my bio. And y'all, I fucking did it. <laughs> that was my first fucking episode, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> So, I love y'all. Please tell a friend, tell a motherfucking friend, the bitch. Samaya is back, and I'm back with my own shit. This was not just another sex podcast. Thank you for tuning in, and I will catch y'all for episode two. Bye. 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 <laughs>